welcome to another edition of Seamless Style, powered by Politics and Polaroids. I'm your host, Mr. Parker. Episode 94. It's 94 or 95. I can't never remember, guys. Y'all gotta y'all gotta pardon me. I can't never remember, but we're getting closer to close and closer to 100. And unfortunately slash fortunately we're getting very close to spring down here in the mid south the temperatures are already starting to average in the low to mid 60s in all honesty this particular week that just passed uh, most of the days were in the 70s but uh, North Carolina has strange temperatures, especially when it's in the transitional periods between uh, seasons. So I'm sure we'll see some 50, 50 something degree highs and then back to 60s and so on and so forth. And it'll fluctuate. It'll fluctuate for most of March. I say that I say, unfortunately, because, of course, me being a lover of layers means we have to layer less. I say fortunately because I have definitely decided that I'm going to embrace spring more. I still hate summer. I'll never like summer. I, there's nothing that will ever change my mind about summer. I hate it. I'm never going to like it. But spring, I've decided that, you know, we can still get some things off in spring. Spring is, temperature-wise, it's a great transitional period. The entire first two months of spring, you transition it from winter temperatures to summer temperatures. So, you know, even, even your low to mid-70s is not excruciatingly hot. So it gives you the opportunity to, you know, do some outdoor outdoor activities without melting in a sweltering heat. So that means that we can definitely start preparing for one of my, and I'm willing to guess one of your favorite outdoor activities, water sports. As I've stated before in previous episodes, I love nautical, not just the attire, not just the ensembles, not just the aesthetic, but actually doing certain things on water. Uh, I've never done jet skis, but, <clears throat> you know, yacht rides, pontoon rides, speed boats, uh, rowing, things of that nature, man, I'm all in. However, or shall I say, in addition to, this is a style and fashion vlog uh, based solely on the world of Ralph Lauren, which means the world is our oyster when it comes to discussing water sports, style, fashion, Ralph Lauren. So, this particular episode is going to be split into two episodes. The next two episodes will be all about water sports and attire and ensembles that you can put together for particular water nautical related events. So I have three rigs for you and including the ensemble I'm wearing, that's gonna put us at four for the day. We can start down here. I've talked about these slippers before needlepoint slippers in the beautiful aviator navy blue don't give up the ship written written on the side of the shoe i've gone over the history of that particular uh phrase you had to go back to other episodes or you can just google it like i did has a an anchor on this vamp and it has a clipper on the other other vamp beautiful pair of needlepoint slippers by 
RL Purple Lady. No socks. We're going raw dog. No socks. A pair of Admiral pants. This uh, Admiral pants are uh, Navy inspired slim fitting dress pants by Polo Blue Label. Uh, they have a white, not chalk stripe, but a stitched, a white stitched uh, stripes on these particular pants. Beautiful pair of pants. The rugby Ralph Lauren R with the crossed oars, shawl, shawl collar pullover sweater. One of those iconic pieces. Navy blue stripes here. Off white in color, tone all elbow patches, and the shawl collar is beautifully uh is beautifully um nautical inspired with the blue and white stripes, and then of course the R with the crossed oars. They also made this in a women's version. It was it was sad to see some dudes originally wearing the women's version because Either they didn't know that there was a men's version or they didn't care. Either way, whew, that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. The women's version is a boat neck and it has blue and, blue and white stripes around the, around the boat neck. But otherwise, they're pretty much the same sweater. Uh, I have on a blue and white stripe button down, uh, thin woven sports shirt. I even put on a little bit of REO jewelry today. We have a Polo Blue Label uh, nautical rope bracelet here with an anchor with the PRL on it. And then we have a rugby Ralph Lauren nautical rope bracelet in the all navy with the uh, brown leather clasp. So, um, oh, and a Polo Blue Label blue and white striped uh, flat cap to uh, complement the pants and complete the navel look. All right, so again, like I said, three rigs, water sports, water sports, put that thing in sport. Doo -doo. Shout out to the Migos. Y'all ready? Me too. Man, let's go. For this look, I'm doing things my way. My way might be the right way. My way might be the wrong way, but I'm doing things my way. Let me explain. This logo, it's an iconic logo that was first seen and made popular on a sweater vest, a cricket sweater vest, all right? The particular print ad that I first saw it on was done by one of, if not my favorite, Ralph Lauren print ad models, Mr. Pierre Woods. I know it's a cricket logo as far as that was the intent because he's wearing this logo on the center of a cricket sweater vest, navy stripes, blue slacks, navy blue slacks, white jacket with the cricket man down on one knee holding the cricket bat, wickets behind the cricket man, actual wickets behind P. Woods in the photo. However, I own a cricket bat and I've never seen a cricket bat that was this freaking long, the handle was this freaking long and then the heart, the hard edge of the bat was this short. These look like crossed oars to me. Now this particular sweater, obviously they got the stripes here. Uh, that goes all the way down the shawl. Cricket inspired, but I'm telling you, these look like oars. So today, this is a rowing sweater. This is a rowing themed, rowing inspired cardigan. Not cream. Argument. I'm just saying. I've never seen I've never seen cricket bats this long. Anyway, I digest. I mean digress. 1922, 1928. 
with the iconic uh i'm assuming this is a i see a r i see what is probably a backwards p and then i'm assuming this may be a c i don't know that's that's some scrambled up mess there but it's still iconic it still looks great and who really cares at the end of the day man this is a dope sweater there's a uh if I'm not mistaken, there's a rugby version that may have came out before this one. This is the Polo Blue Label version. I got it about four or five years ago. Paired it with a an estate collared uh, dress shirt, Polo Blue Label, in a uh, gingham pattern. I did a navy, uh, aviator navy uh, heraldic tie with the three crown castle crest with crossed oars behind it. Uh, navy blue and white D-ring belt, ribbon D-ring belt, just to stick with the theme, overall uh, aquatic theme here, nautical theme, and then the pieces they resist on, another pair of Nantucket Reds, man, you, you know, when we all know the, we not, we all know the rule, when, when spring is here, you bring out them Nantuckets. So this is another pair of my uh, of Nantuckets that I own. This is my son my son faded pair, uh, nautical uh, or crossed oars on the back pocket. I'd finish this off with a pair of boat shoes. Probably no socks. If I did do socks, I probably would keep it simple and do something in a navy. But um, definitely brown boat shoes to complete this entire nautical look. I'm only speaking for me, but. The ultimate water sport, water activity, nautical event, yachts. I love being on yachts. I haven't been on uh, the Naomi from um, the Wolf of Wall Street. I haven't been on a yacht that size. I mean, I have, but they call it a ferry and it's... It takes you to, uh, where's the Wu-Tang from? Long Island, Staten Island. I've been on the Staten Island Ferry. That's not, anyway, yachts. Love yachts. It's just, it's just so relaxing, so serene. It's a great way to enjoy a, a, a huge body of water, a lake. So this particular ensemble, A1, perfect for yacht this is the type of uh ensemble that if you wear this on a yacht it will be impressive it'll definitely be impressive people would think that you know your stuff whether you do or you do, don't doesn't matter you're a ralph lauren guy so you play the part you dress the part uh the buttons the gold buttons on your classic navy blue blazer whether it's the traditional navy blue blazer or the double-breasted version usually has the uh the uh crossed polo mounts on it and a and a uh an equestrian helmet this one is no different doesn't matter when it comes to yachting a double-breasted a navy blue double-breasted with gold buttons will always work always work it will always work um when i was putting this ensemble together i said to myself i said self you've had this navy blue blazer with gold buttons double breasted six on two configuration for a while and i'm like why well, ain't replaced this blazer with a, a updated version and i figured out why when i was putting the jacket on i don't know why I, Guess just not paying attention, maybe having too much stuff, but who are we fooling? You never have too much Ralph Lauren. But this particular uh, sports coat is Polo University by Ralph Lauren. And as y'all know, I'm a closet huge fan of Polo University. So I guess that's why I haven't got rid of it. This, this, is, this isn't even vintage. This isn't, this is not even vintage. So I'm gonna have to get me another navy blue blazer, six on two configuration, gold buttons by Ralph Lauren, 
that's dual vented because I gotta have that in my life. But I'm not getting rid of this. I just keep chopping her down. Anywho, navy blue blazer, gold button, six on two. Uh, cropped chinos with all over GTH lighthouse motif, right? Embroidered lighthouses, and they're all supposed to be replicas of uh, famous, uh, famous American lighthouses. I know I saw Kitty Hawk on there. I know I saw Montauk on there. So yeah, this is uh, these are pretty dope, and they're cropped. I roll them up just because on rigging the Ralph Lauren way. That's how how you're supposed to do it. But these are already these are already cropped, so they're ready for spring. They're ready for no socks and beautiful beautiful footwear. A state collared dress shirt, Columbia blue, navy blue, white stripe, polo blue label uh, ascot. Asymmetric designs, not quite a foul yard, definitely not floral, just a beautiful, beautiful pattern. And uh, I went with, I went with the lime green pocket square. This is a purple label pocket square, uh, lime green with white polka dots, just because I wanted another splash of color, but not a lot. And I would probably do like maybe an anchor, an anchor here as the lapel pin. Uh, but yeah, this is a great look. Finish it off. You could, I could do a pair, pair of boat shoes. I could do a pair of white. Uh, I have a pair of white monk straps in the uh, in suede. I could, I could do those. Like kind of shoe, shoe wise. You know what? I'm gonna tell you. I actually was thinking about doing a pair of white canvas sneakers with this too. Um, so yeah, there are quite a few different uh, pieces of footwear that you could do for this look. But this is perfect, a perfect look for yachting. If you were to go on a search engine, Google, and type in killingthegame.com, probably going to see this guy first. If he's at the Henley Royal Regatta, first 48, he just killed the parking lot. Okay? I'm telling you, this look right here, yes. And I, I, I'm, I'm just that, I'm just that guy that will wear this around town. Like, I, hey, look, man, it is what it is. But definitely, like, if I'm, if I was going to uh, Harvard v Yale in a, in a first eight match, if I was lucky enough to be at Henley on Thames for the Henley Royal Regatta, this is what I'm wearing today. One, all right. So let's start at the top. Uh. A beautiful Tam style linen. Linen cap. All right. Cream, navy stripes. Uh, on that cream, it looks uh, probably looks a little more royal than navy, but it actually is navy. That's rugby rifle. The shirt, button down collared, a little bit of navy, a whole lot of uh, Columbia blue, yellow. Uh, what is that? I'm going to call it plaid. It almost has a window pane feel. It's almost like you took window pane, mixed it with tattersall, and came with whatever this is. But it's more of a plaid. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's listed as plaid. Navy blue heraldic bow tie, red and uh, yellow stripes. Beautiful crest on here. That's also polo blue label. Cream boat neck sweater. With the cricket, the cricket inspired chevron here. You've seen this before, probably around this time last year. I think I uh, featured this sweater on a, on a, on a read, but we brought it back for this particular purpose because why not? Cream, cream based, tonal R with crossed oars. Rugby is just good for those crossed oars. Uh, chevron, navy, with uh, Columbia blue striping here, here. Just, just just gorgeous come on down here to the slim fit chinos in a mixture of columbia blue and slate blue almost not quite but maybe almost even a little bit of jamaica blue in it but it's got that it's got that rustic that rustic wash to it man these are these are whew. oh man 
I'm, I'm, I'm losing my composure here. And we ain't even got to the peace de resistance yet. This beauty. Man, look at these buttons. These buttons are crazy. Are y'all seeing this? Are y'all seeing these buttons? Navy blue. Iconic. Uh, a couple of my couple of my RLGs got this uh got this um this rowing blazer here. Man, this piping is crazy. Royal blue and gold. You got the gold PRC here, Polo Polo Rowing Club, with those same tools that's on the cardigan sweater, but that's supposed to be the cricket logo. Okay. Anyway, like I said. Uh, uh, little, little, little. pocket square gold to complement complement our our logo our crested logo on the pocket piping here piping on the uh, uh, behind look at the, the collar the collar dude the collar is navy blue royal blue gold stripes her uh reptile reptile inspired again these buttons. These uh, rustic brass buttons with this uh, Polo RL Gothic Gothic print on each button, man. These, listen, man. This freaking this freaking rowing blazer is nothing but the truth. So help me God. This ensemble right here. This is a shutdown ensemble. This 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 puts you on the map. And this this particular sports coat is not. Uh, it's not a uniform. I've seen I've seen it I've seen it in quite a few uh, collectors ensembles. I've seen it uh, on eBay since I purchased mine quite a few years ago. I, I think I've had mine maybe maybe seven, six, seven years now, and I, I see it on occasion. So you know, definitely if you if you see it, go out and grab it, man. This piece is definitely worth it. And that's another episode in the books. Y'all gonna have to start reminding me, man, about the fragrance, the, the fragrance uh, of the evening for my ensemble, man. I keep forgetting, but for this particular ensemble, it's probably a no-brainer. What fragrance you think I went with? N no. Come on, man. Red? No. Yes, there you go. Polo Sport. Now, <clears throat> if I had the Polo Crest, I think we, I think that was still Polo Sport, but it's, it also said Crest on it. If I would have had that, I probably would have went with that one. It's a little, it's a little stronger than Polo Sport. But I went with Polo Sport because we talking what? Water sports. So this was the perfect... You know, Polo Sport and Polo Blue, they smell like blue. Don't, like, to me it smells like, it just, it smells like blue. So, you know, if if your ensemble is a water sport based ensemble or has predominantly blue in it, any kind of blue, it just feels, it just feels right to go with Polo Blue, any of the Polo Blues, uh, or, or, or Polo Sport, but I went with Polo Sport. I just love that fragrance. That Polo Sport is just righteous, boy. But that's what the fragrance, the fragrance, fragrance of the evening for this ensemble was. But that's another episode in the books. Part one of Water Sports. Part two will be next Sunday. Get in the comment section. Maybe I've completed part two. Maybe I haven't. Who knows? Honestly, only I know. So, get in the comment section. Tell me what your favorite water sport is. Tell me what your favorite nautical inspired ensemble would be. And maybe make a suggestion for an ensemble that coincides with water sports that you didn't see on this particular episode. Like I said, maybe I've already recorded the second episode, or maybe I haven't. Who knows? One other thing I want to tell you guys too. If you haven't already started following this page right here, 
this is my uh this is my squad this is my um all of these guys are my friends uh some of them are new friends like Mill Brandon or a noble savage well yeah kind of new friend i know i know him for a minute and some of them are friends i know him for six seven eight years like my guy dean but we're all ralph lauren guys that's the name of our page the ralph lauren guys rl guys 67 and what's crazy <clears throat> Is we all chat every day. We have a chat. We chat every day. We have each other's numbers, whatever the case may be. But it was brought to my attention. You know, I'm not a huge Kanye West fan. From a the type of person he is standpoint. But I will admit, the boy got talent when it comes to music. So, and being that I, I have a music background, I have watched the doc. So, uh, my boy Mill hit me and he say, he said, hey man, is that Ali and the Kanye doc? I don't want to, you know, ask him because, you know, I just, I ain't known him as long as you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, bro, I don't know. I've, I've only watched episode one and two. I haven't seen episode three. And he was like, uh, nah, it's episode one when he was talking, somebody was talking to Kanye West, man, it looked just like Ali. I was like, well, let me ask him. I, you know. I, I wasn't looking like that, like that, like that, but, you know, so I hit Ali up, he was like, yeah, that was me, man, I used to work for Rockers, I was like, oh, shit, okay, see, I'm saying, man, it's just like, you never know, number one, and number two, just the humbleness of that, like, he, he wanted to sign Kanye West, Rockers Records didn't, didn't see his vision. You know that I'm, I, I I try to be humble. I consider myself a humble person, but I wouldn't be mad at somebody if they screamed that at the top of their lungs. Yo, I used to work for Rockers. I saw Kanye, the vision of Kanye before anybody except Kanye himself. Like I wouldn't be mad at somebody for screaming that. I wouldn't think that's conceited, cocky, pretentious, anything. But you know, Ali, for the two years I known him, he never let me know that. I just thought that was pretty freaking cool, man. He's just such a humble dude. So, yeah, uh, you know, the RL guys, man, we a legacy in the making. So, make sure y'all go follow, man. We, we, you know, we, we, we do some, we do some pretty good stuff with the RL. If you like, if you like what I'm doing, then you'll like everything else going on. All right? Get in the comment section and holler at me, all right? Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and tell a friend, because we here. And we on the water and we making moves and we creating legacies. Artists paint pictures, haters paint narratives. So don't be a hater. Alright? Y'all have a good one.